Okay, so I get asked quite quite often, how do I do the measurements on the cameras while I repair? And uh, I just wanted to cover a little bit of, uh, of what I usually do. And this is a crucial step that I usually uh, do even before opening the camera. So this is very important because it can tell us a uh, few things. Uh, first of all, uh, it can tell us if the camera gets any power and also it can tell us if the switches the, uh, on, cam on Canon camera especially, if the power switches, there are two power switches. One is on the battery door. There's a little switch over here, uh, maybe on some of my videos you saw. Uh, that I'm reaching that point and the other one it's on the on the uh, battery compartment there's another switch here so uh, this uh, method can tell you if one of the switches are damaged or maybe there's something else there's a short to to some of the circuits uh, circuit boards inside the camera I always do this if you have a camera that has a uh, water damage or impact damage this step you don't you don't need to do it you need to you will need to open the camera and visually check the condition internally and then decide what to do next because obviously if it's a, an impact damage that it might break some components inside and if it's water damage again that might damage some some parts and definitely needs a visual visual check but in other case, some other cases when the camera is completely dead and we don't know what to do, what's the first step? This is the first step, uh, what we need to do. And um, it's just to understand what the camera says and based on that, we can do the next step. It's, this is a topic that can cover a lot of things and it, it, it will be like very long but I'm gonna stay with the basics and I'm gonna show you the differences between a, a faulty camera and a working camera and this is the only step that you need to understand to uh, to be able to decide what's the next step so okay that being said let's go straight so when I have my camera and when it's uh, for example, this camera doesn't doesn't turn on. Uh, it has some short to uh, short somewhere. Uh, I know that, but let's discover this together. So I usually I have my power bank uh, and I don't need the multimeter. But for those they don't have uh, my uh, they don't have something more advanced than this. You can still use the multimeter and you can understand. You basically you're gonna have the same reading. So there's no need to have a very advanced um, tools but definitely you're going to need to have a multimeter and you're going to need to have a dummy battery you you can buy this online they are very cheap or otherwise you can uh, for uh, example for uh, on aliexpress you can find them on aliexpress um, uh, or otherwise you can open a damaged battery i think i opened this one i don't remember maybe i made this one you can open a damaged a damaged battery and you can uh, you can uh, make it by, by yourself. So, what do you need? Definitely you're going to need something to power this. In this case, this, uh, this camera uh, requires 7.4 volts. If, I, if we look on a, uh, a normal battery, uh, on battery usually they, they, set, they put the, uh, the specs. So you can, we can see here the voltage is 7.4 but uh, definitely we need the voltage. It's better if we have something that can uh, has a, um, somewhere above maybe two, two amps. That's recommended. Um, so I'm gonna show you this, the, this, uh, the setup I have here. So what you need to do, this is my output, the power I get, I get it from. I have an external uh, 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 power, so this is the negative positive, obviously. And usually, because I have my power, I just connect it this way, and I have my reading. I cannot show. I, I'm not going to show you that, but uh, in in this video, I'm going to show you what you need to do. So, obviously, I'm going to explain like uh, for dummies for everyone to understand. So maybe 
the video can uh, will be a little bit longer than usual, but this is the um, this is my goal basically. I want for uh, for you out there to understand if you have a, a, some basic knowledge in electronics, electrics, electronics, uh, you can do you can do this. So you you will need to set up your multimeter. Uh, usually the multimeter is connected to a uh, com, which is the ground, is the negative, and then uh, then the positive. This is the setup to do all the readings, all most of the measure basically. But in our case, we're going to need to put the positive on the amps reading the current we're going to put on this one here you're going to have on most of the multimeters they have this uh, this um, option so you will put the um, the probe on the uh, where it says 10 amps you're going to put it there and then you put you set up your wheel when it says you're going to see here 10 amps as well so now this is ready. What we're gonna do with these probes uh, on the negative will stay. So again, my dummy battery, the negative of the battery will stay. We're not gonna disconnect it, but the positive we will disconnect it. And I'm gonna connect one probe here and the other one on the other side. So basically, I'm going to create a um, a loop. It's a it's a, it's a connection in series. So basically, I have my positive. It goes to the positive of the multimeter, goes through the multimeter, and then it went, comes back and it went, connects with the positive of the battery. And then. I put my battery inside and I look at the reading. I'm going to show you the working, I want to show you first the working camera. I have another camera here, both are Canon. As you might have not noticed, I, uh, I prefer uh, working with Canons. I do work with other ones, but I highly prefer using Canons. So this is a normal working camera. We have a reading, as you can see here, but I'm just going to go normal now. The camera asks because I don't have a genuine battery inside. I have a dummy battery and recognize that. It asks me if I want to uh, continue. I'm going to put OK. And there are some readings. OK. So, as you can see, based on what, what camera steps ha does, uh, they have there are some steps is like a checkup the camera does uh, the multimeter the the current uh, changes so now the camera is in standby we have a 0 0.05 of an amp so um, 50 milliamps so now we have 50 milliamps okay and if I push on a button that will increase it's 100 milliamps and back because I push, the camera does the command, takes the command, and then goes back in standby. If I do a picture, if I take a picture, that increases. It goes very close uh, to 100 milliamps. It goes very close to one amp, which is normal because it's used lots of, uh, in, the camera needs to use lots of power, lots of uh, current. So I'm going to show you now that I just explained a few things, whatever you do, if, we, if I turn on the, the screen, I'm going to have an, a, a different reading. Okay, so I have 200 milliamps. If I do a few things here, it will increase slightly. But if I put, for example, I've put on uh, um, live view, as you can see already, I have 640 milliamps. And if I take pictures, definitely just that changes based on the camera needs. And yeah, now it's back to uh, whatever it is, the standby of the camera. I might have, if I increase, let me see if I can increase, if I put multi, multi shot, that will, that will slightly increase. So it's normal because the camera requires more power. 
So this is the way, this is a normal way uh, the, the camera, uh, the reading behaves. But I'm going to show you what you need to understand most is the start of the the power on the camera. When you power, when you power, now we are, have the camera is turned off and we have zero. We need to have zero. In some cameras they might turn on but they have some little reading here. If that happens, that's not, not, that is not normal. But l look at the way the camera, look at the, read, the way the reading behaves when you turn on the camera. So just, just turning on, is doing a, screen, uh, um, a sensor cleaning, is doing some readings, and now it's back in standby. This is the thing, this is the step, this is the, the part that you need to understand. This is the normal startup of the camera. This is the most important part. The camera turns on, it has some readings. Some other, cam some other cameras, they might not show anything on the screen. They might not do the same steps as this camera does. But you're going you're gonna to have these readings. It will reach a point, maybe 200 milliamps, because this one cleans uh, each time I turn on and off the uh, the camera, but if does that that doesn't do if that doesn't happen, you're gonna have a reading like this 200 milliamps. Now because the camera doesn't need uh, it, it does it every time because it's set it's set it to do it. I hope you uh, you you start understanding. It's quite crucial to understand this step. This very st very first step when you turn on the camera, and turn off the camera. Especially when you turn on the camera, you have this reading. 200 milliamps, then it goes a bit lower. It's higher now because the camera has uh, is doing a, um, image sensor cleaning, ultrasound cleaning, and then it go it goes in standby. And whatever we do, as I was already said, if you push on the buttons, you're gonna have a certain reading. If I open the door here. As you can see, the camera, the camera, the power on the camera, the camera. I just opened the door of the memory card, and this is off. This basically, so basically, the camera is off, no power at all. It, it, that can tell us the set, the switch is working properly. Same with the battery door. We have zero, and now we have reading. So this can help you, not necessarily because this camera is fully working. But on, um, on um, damaged cameras, if these switches are faulty, you're not going to get any reading uh, once you put power on the camera. So now I'm going to show you what the reading with a faulty camera. And it's not much, basically. Right. So watch carefully, I put it inside, right, and no reading yet because the um, the door is closed, the, sorry, the door is open, I close the door, <laughs> nothing, nothing happens. Of course, because this just got disconnected. So, I'm gonna just temporarily put it here. And when I put the battery inside, I don't have reading, which is okay. As soon as I close the, the, the door, the battery door, I get a reading. So I know for sure the, uh, the switch is, is working fine. Probably when I'm going to open it, it will stay like that, yes, because there's something wrong with the camera. But when I connect and I have the door open, nothing, nothing happens. As soon as I close it, there's a problem, there's a, sh uh, a damage. It could be a short, it could be a damaged circuit board, whatever, but I know for sure there's something wrong with the camera. I know for sure that the switch is working. The switch for of the of the battery, uh, the battery compartment. Let's see if I put this way. I open the uh, memory card door, and I close the switch. 
the sorry, I close the door of the battery. Still, it's uh, I get some power. So in this case, doesn't matter because there is some damage somewhere inside the camera. So what I usually do, and I mentioned this, and not necessarily in this video, I mentioned also in other videos. What I usually do, I open the camera and I go straight to the power board. That's the first thing I do. The first thing I, I, I always do. Um, as I said earlier, there are two ways. Either replace the whole circuit, um, the, power, the power board or try to repair it. It's much easier to replace it than repair it. If you have more knowledge, obviously you can, you can attempt to repair the power board. Um, sadly, all camera manufacturers, they don't share anything for, uh, of their elect electric um, diagrams. So you need to have a little bit of experience with uh, electronics in general to understand debugging, debugging uh, circuit boards. But as I said, this is the first step I usually do. Uh, and this can help us to understand if the switches are working and what's happening inside the camera. The other things that are uh, after this step, uh, you need to watch the other videos I have and start understanding if you don't have any, any kind of knowledge, you need to watch the other videos to understand a little bit better how I, uh, I debug a faulty camera. I think it's uh, all I needed to say, the most crucial parts to understand how, how to measure the power once you put power to the camera.